But this is where the cultures divide, though. Poor black families still dress their kids well for school. Doesn't matter what's going on in the budget, kids gonna look good for school, right? Poor white families, you know the deal immediately. As soon as you see the parents, come on down again, Bakersfield, and then no. Yeah. You got school clothes Monday through Wednesday, wear the Thursday shit for Monday too. But... You can't wear repeats at a black school. That's a bad prop. I would go into class and it's just like, hey Jamarcus, white boy got the same sock hey, on Monday, motherfucker. You same sock, Evan has bitch. <laughs> I got made fun of by a fat kid named Jamarcus who always had the new Jordans. First of all, fat kid in Jordans, total waste of money. Some of you don't want to laugh because you have fat kids at home. Yep. Spent $300 on his shoes, now what, they're sideways and shit? Jordan's not even dunking, now he's taking a charge. Men don't cat call women anymore. You guys have gotten really scary. I don't appreciate it, you know what I mean? Like, remember back in the day, y'all used to be like, y'all don't do that shit no more, y'all weak. <laughs> and I blame the pandemic because the world got way more sensitive, so nowadays a man walking up to a woman saying, hey, beautiful, can be borderline sexual harassment depending on the environment. I remember pre-pandemic, I walked past a group of guys and one of them ran up to me and he said, hey, Ma, can I get your number? And I said, no, <laughs> because I didn't know the pandemic was coming. <laughs> I thought I still had more days outside to reject more men. <laughs> so I was quite arrogant in my response. I was like, no, you're trying to show up for your little friends. And he was like, yo, you gonna regret this. And two weeks into the pandemic, he was right. <laughs> I thought about that man for a whole year. I was like, oh shit, what if he was a prophet? What if I said no to Jesus? They said he was coming back. You know who the most toxic nigga ever was? Michael Jackson. Michael Joseph Jackson. All his songs was toxic. Mike out here getting side coochie, telling everybody. I met this bitch at the club. I pulled her down on the street. I put a bitch in the car. She grabbed the mic on with me. That ain't really what he said, but I'm paraphrasing. I think a Mike was so toxic he witnessed the murder and wouldn't say nothing. Yeah, that was the other song. Won't you hush and let me tell the jokes? Oh, I want to participate. I know he's talking about face ass. But the next joke song was Smooth Criminal, where he witnessed the murder and would not say nothing. What type of creep ass nigga stand there and watch a woman get murdered and won't say nothing? And, and I came up on the window. I heard the sound of a crescendo. It came out of your apartment. I see some blood stains on the carpet. He gonna lean all up in her window. And then are you okay? And then are you okay? Are you okay? What? Won't you call 911? Creep ass little boy. When you make black people laugh real, real hard, some of them get up and run. <laughs> just hurls you 200 miles an hour to the other end of the room. And they managed to high five 47 of their friends <laughs> on the way over there. Let one of my people run in the middle of a show. <laughs> We're all running, okay? <laughs> If you ever see anybody that looks remotely close to me, 
run in the middle of a show? Get your ass up, get the fuck out. It is not part of the program. The closer these eyebrows get to each other, the more in danger you are. I'm just letting you know. So I thought all gay dudes were flamboyant, man, and come find out they not. They come all different types. Some of them act just like me, talk just like me. You will never know it. I didn't know. I went on a gay date and I ain't know it. Hey, wait, hold on, let me tell you, let me, hey bro, let me tell you what happened first. I'm not gay, I'm just gonna let you know what happened. Cause I didn't know he act like me, talk just like me. I play a lot of basketball. I was gonna go to the NBA, I'm like, no, nah, I'm gonna let LeBron have it. I'm gonna do these jokes at the Laugh Factory. That's why. So I'm doing comedy. I can hoop. So long story. I'm hooping one day. I don't know if you go to open runs for, you know, men and women, open gym. You pick your five, somebody else pick their five, the winners stay on. So I'm at the gym. In Hollywood, I'm at the gym. This dude, 6'5", walk in. I'm like, oh, he on my squad, off back. You know what I mean? <laughs> he gets on the court. We don't lose a game. This boy is special. You ever see somebody playing regular basketball? You're like, you don't belong here. <laughs> like, why you not somewhere making millions? You are too gifted to be with us. <laughs> Like he was that good. I'm throwing him oopsie, jumping out. Ah, I'm like, ah, this boy is cold. Dang, this boy is nice. And that's a bat. I'm a basketball fan. Understand, that's what I wanted to do. But I go ahead and let them have that. I'm here. So when I see him, I'm intrigued. I'm like, man, I need to let him play with me in the leagues, in the little, you know, adult leagues. So after the run, it's so I'm like, hey, bro, you nice, man. I'm like, you played professionally? He's like, yeah, I did. Played overseas. I don't play no more. He's like, hey, what you doing later? <laughs> nothing, I ain't doing nothing. I ain't doing nothing. <laughs> he like, hey, I got Laker tickets. Put your number in this phone. You can roll. You want to roll? <laughs> yes, I want to go. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of? I'm going, bro. I offer you Laker tickets right now. You like, where, 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 where you want me to be? So he gave me the phone. I put my number in his phone. It's a Samsung. I don't know how to work. He's like, cool, I'm gonna come pick you up. I'm like, and you gonna pick me up? 